And good morning and welcome to Fankhouse Reserve on the beautiful Gold Coast. A few clouds in the sky, but beautiful conditions. A couple of showers early in the morning, but this round five, round four Neville Clash, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here, is between the Gold Coast Suns and the Sydney Swans. Mark Kennedy's my name. I'm the one making the mistakes about what round we're up to. And joining me this morning into the early afternoon will be the Neville Media Manager, Jess Webster. Welcome to the coverage. We've had a couple of late changes with the Swans, which I'm sure you'll tell us about, but we're going to see plenty of talent on display this, uh, uh, this morning and this afternoon. Absolutely. It's a beautiful day here on the Gold Coast for footy, and we're going to see a very, very different Sydney Swans team to what we're used to in the Neefall. They are down to 10 listed players today. Uh, Nick Newman and Colin O'Reid, another two late outs, and six debutants coming in for the Sydney Swans today. Uh, for the Suns, they will come into today's clash with 13 listed players, including their own debutant as well, Jackson Brumley. So um, plenty of young, new faces um, here. And that's what I think we love about the Knee for Kanga is that, um, you know, we're always unearthing new talent every week and uh, there'll be plenty of that on display today. Well, I'm, I'm going to give myself an out straight away. So if I do miss any young players out there that are having their first game or a couple of games in, I'll apologise to all the mums and dads watching and indeed our audience and the supporters of the Sydney Swans and the Gold Coast Suns. We are setting up for a big day. Uh, Aaron Hall, of course, is probably the marquee or the highest uh, or the best known player in the side for the Gold Coast Suns, 100 AFL games. He wouldn't like to be at this NIFA level, so a lot to prove for him. And we see some young talent um, of Darcy Cameron, who's had some AFL experience. And then we've got the likes of Alia Alia and also Stoddart and also, uh, for me... Um, Matthew Ling stands out as another one along with James Rose. Yeah, definitely. And I'm really, I watched the Sydney Swans uh, two weeks ago against Brisbane at Berthingar. Of course, they're coming off a bye. And I really liked uh, McCartan and uh, Amati as well for the Swans. So, and for Gold Coast, really looking forward to see how Braden Crosley goes. And uh, of course, Jacob Dawson, another young one to watch out for. Well, the siren has sounded here at Fankhauser Reserve. We're about to get this round four clash underway. Not the best of bounces. Umpire calls play on. There's that man we spoke about, Aaron Hall, getting it deep inside forward 50. Maybaum just shuffled the ball out towards the boundary. Here's Bokai, gets around the corner, goes with the left and just pulls it to the near side. Probably a good opportunity in the finish, but not capitalised on for the Suns in their first foray forward. And already, Kanga, we saw Aaron Hall get his hands on the footy early. How important will he be today for the Suns getting that first clearance? So Stoddart went right up the middle. Good tackle there by the Suns, and that was by Hall. There's Baru. He's right in amongst it, along with Boki. And holding the ball is the call. So coming up with the ball is Amati. So Joel Amati comes out to the clubhouse side of the ground, and he finds a target. And on that occasion, it was Soff. And he, in turn, goes up the line and finds McCartan. Looking forward to seeing a bit of him. Very impressive a few weeks ago. Chips the ball inboard. Finds it Schumach. Goes almost to the forward 50. Cameron comes with a fly and takes the mark. He just had his name written all over that one. 65 metres out from goal. Just sits the ball up. Looking for a Lear, a Lear. Leslie's right there with the big fist. Just punches it back to that defensive 50. Just gathering the ball with Parker. Puts it to a dangerous spot. Unable to take the mark with the Swans. The Suns will look to repel. In there is Brown. Schoenfeld is there for the Suns as well. Spinning out of trouble is Shear. Is that enough out of trouble? Yes, it is. The ball shuffled out. Now they might find a little bit of space. And the Suns, they are away. Brody, not the best of kicks, finds Eddie Sandsbury, the oldest man on the ground, former North Melbourne player. Played with Aspley in the Neefel as well. Schoenfeld gets the ball out. Now to Brody again, right to the forward 50. Wasn't a good kick or good entry. Just making a little bit of a mess of that was Dent. But the Swans, they'll come away close to the boundary line right in front of us. And right there is Soff. Just a couple of um, like skill errors there from the Gold Coast Suns moving forward has caused a turnover here. So they had the opportunity, but uh, didn't quite get a clean entry inside 50. So the pack formed. No clean getaway from that pack. The ball spills out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. So early exchanges here. 
I think we'll see a really fascinating battle today, Kango. I, I expect the Suns to come away with the win, but uh, I wouldn't underestimate the Swans. Just with the tall timber, I think, and, and Cameron, and he will be super important today, as well as Aaliyah and McCartan up forward as well. So um, it'll be how they make the best use out of their tools, I think. So Willis got on the end of a chain of handballs. Baru runs onto it. A little bit of space to work. This looks almost, I was going to say, looks like a better inside 50. There is Jasker. Goes down deep. Right there also is Malloy, the young man, and the quick snap on goal goes to the far side on this occasion. And one point results as Stoddart has the ball. So two points as Stoddart plays on. Ball over the top to Mitch Rogers. Say hello to his parents, Andrew and Tracy. Of course, Andrew, former Essendon and Geelong player. Played in the SNFL with Woodville West Torrens, a teammate of mine. Uh, so welcome to you, Bucky and Trace. Hope you're both well in Sydney. Of course, Andrew coaching, I believe, Manly. Waringa in the New South Wales competition. Cameron from the restart there. Brody, he's had his hands on it a few times. Archie, here's Hall. Not sure where to go. Gets around one. Archie as well. Stands, gives it back to Hall. Now a little bit of room to move. Gives it to Brody. Approaching forward 50, it'll be a clean shot of goal and a clean start for shots on goal from that man, Will Brody. And that's the first one for the Suns, 1-2-8 with the Swans yet to score. A couple of experienced players combining there in Aaron Hall and, and Will Brody. Uh, they'll be obviously pushing their claim to regain their spot in, in the AFL side. But, uh, yeah, great finish there by Will Brody. And uh, we can sort of see how that explosiveness, I think, from Aaron Hall will play a big role in, in today's match. He's uh, got so much talent and so much to prove as well. So looking forward to seeing how he, he goes. And, of course, Archie, uh, Callum Archie, uh, second up. Uh, he had his first game back for the year. Uh, last week, so he'll build in game time, no doubt. And for the Swans, I notice they've gone with a pretty experienced forward line, Alira Lear, um, McCartan, and also James Rose down there. So Crosley and Cameron Crosley. Not sure what he was up to there. Archie, man we spoke about, had his hands on the ball. Couldn't get anything cleaned away on that occasion. There is a tackling machine there in Jacob Dawson. Like the way he goes about his footy after coming onto the Gold Coast list. Of course, he captained the Suns' NEFL team in round one against Aspley, which is uh, incredible for an 18-year-old. And Braden Crosley captained the side last week uh, against Brisbane. So a lot of rotating young captains just getting that leadership experience. Uh, Crosley gave the kick away and the... The kick from Dar uh, Darcy Cameron went towards Alia Alia. He tried to put it on his chest and got it punched away. Nutting has the ball for the Suns. He's wrapped up. He's going to be in trouble. So the Swans, well done to them. They win the free kick. Rose goes forward. McCartan's the target. Jaska, but McCartan just extended the arms enough to, out of the reach of the fist of Jaska. And well done to Tom McCartan. Yeah, great use there of the footy by the Swans going inside their 450. We we think they would have to take their opportunities uh, going forward uh, against a Sun side with plenty of experience. So um, a goal that they need to make just to keep in touch. We played a bit over six and a quarter minutes and the ball just fades off to the right. You can see there's no real breeze to speak of, so there's no real excuse for poor goal kicking today either. As slight as the breezes, although that kick in was a very dodgy. McCartan couldn't take it. So trouble afoot for the Suns as the Swans swarm. But there will be a ball up as a stalemate is called by the umpire. Just going back to McCartan, I saw him play two weeks ago against Brisbane. Love the way he presented himself. So looking forward to seeing his development in the NEFL. Crosley on hands and knees along with his opposing ruckman in Darcy Cameron. Dawson feeds it out. Chain of handballs ends with Leslie. He goes outside defensive 50. And the strength on that occasion of Shear wins the day. Just at half back on that outer side. Crosley. The ball got to him on the bounce. But it seemed, I was going to say it seemed to be no problem. But he handled it straight to Darcy. And Darcy just said, thank you. I'll shoot on goal. But errant is that kick. And so the two minors for the Swans. Matching the Suns on the behind tally, but the Gold Coast Suns have a goal to go with it. The kick-in comes towards Crosley and Darcy Cameron. I think there's going to be a little bit of niggle in that contest all day. 
And it was Crosley who wins a free kick. Goes in board, finds Brody. Just going to try and set themselves up here as this, the Swans just zone off a little. Jacob Dawson has it. Interesting game of tactics given there's so many young players, Jess Webster. And the ball just flipped around. Heron. And now it looks like there's a little bit of space for the Suns. We go over the top now, find Mills. Back to Leslie. He gets a round one. Now the run of Mills again. Go to half forward. That was Brumley. Couldn't take it. But taking it is Shear on the rebound. Baru's there. He's forced to lay the tackle, though. Boki, he gets involved as well. The Swans try to just work it out of defence, but the good tackling pressure comes. That time from Damian Burke, and the ball tied up at half forward for the Suns. Young Harry Parker for the Swans, who's on debut today, was in the middle of that pack. Already had three possessions, one inside 50 and a rebound 50. So busy early as the young Swans Academy player on debut. So Alir Alir, who's gone into the ruck, gives it to Crosley, or gives away the free kick. Eddie Sandsbury on the lead. We know he can kick a goal. Archie has his kick smothered. There is Ballard up there. Might have called him Jasker early. Apologies for that. Working hard there again. Sandsbury around the contest. And the ball over the line. 45 metres around from the Suns goal on that outer side. They are attacking. Of course, Kanga, coming into this match, the Sydney Swans are yet to register a win um, so far this season. So um, definitely unfamiliar territory being in the, in the bottom half of the Nifa ladder. Front spot is Crosley. Got it down easily, but the Swans put their hands on the ball but couldn't extract it cleanly. Burke tries to spin out of one, couldn't quite get the handball away cleanly. And the ball tied up again inside forward 50. Early stages, you just think the Suns look a little more settled than the Swans? Well, with seven debutants in your side, it will take a while, I think, for the Swans to gel today. They get a quick kick away, do the Swans. Uh, Marty McCartan, he's upended as he kicked it. Is it going to get over the back to Rose? It is. So he'll just use his leg speed, but well done there by Nutting. That's a good matchup today because he's got plenty of speed as Rose, as has Nutting. So... Like that matchup, Amadi. Um, he's tackled off it by the Suns in Verdun. Verdun. I'll get that one right as well. Plenty of players around this contest. There would be a good 15 players around this contest. I think the umpire has to ball this up in a second. He's letting it go. And it's just like a rolling maul. And now he decides to call a stoppage. Yeah, plenty of numbers around that contest. Just going back to when Rose had... He Ball went to ground, I thought. Immediately he's going to get around Nutting, but the young fella did well to sort of stop his run, and I think that just shows that the qualities that Connor Nutting has. A free kick picked out there, and that was Cordell. Goes up forward, and the tall timber of Cameron, and he'll be a bit of a handful up there for Jack Leslie. He can go back, and opportunity to level the scores up. Amadi did really well in that contest. He just, without giving away a free kick, managed to hold some space so that Darcy Cameron could come in the front and get a clean take at that mark. Really well done there by Amadi. So Darcy Cameron from Claremont via North Albury. He's a big unit, 204 centimetres and kicks truly. So scores a level. We've played nearly 12 minutes of this first quarter. And whilst we think the Suns have probably settled well, scores are level, Jess Webster. That's what I was saying earlier about, you know, the, the tall forward line of the Sydney Swans will um, potentially expose the Suns if, of course, they get enough ball going inside their forward 50. So their inside 50 entries, I think, will be worth their weight and goal when you, when you look at the likes of um, Hall and Archie in, in the Suns midfield. So, um, yeah, great for the Suns to sort of just keep in touch on the scoreboard as we think uh, Aliyah Aliyah has now moved into the ruck. And that's, the uh, I guess, the strength of the Swans out there today is they, they have the ability to, um, to move around those talls. You'd suspect that Aaliyah Aaliyah and Darcy Cameron will spend a lot of time on the ground today, either resting up forward or in the ruck as we're seeing now. So Aaliyah Aaliyah got the better of 
Brumley and gets the kick forward. Mackenzie Willis comes out, but coming out to meet it in a better fashion was McCartan. Chips the ball forward. It wasn't a good kick and pushing back hard was the Suns and it was Foster. Foster goes to Hall. Had Mackenzie Willis in support, but chose not to use him there. So Hall chips one short. Schoenfeld, the ball gets to him before the opponent gets to him. Hall follows up the old one-two. Goes out to Baru. A little bit of rhyming there. The one-two to Baru. He gives the ball further afield. Leslie just chips the ball off. Well done by Foster. He chips it over the top and they will find. And a good build up there, Will Brody. And go back and shoot it. It'll be a tight angle. 30 metres he'll have to kick it. But uh, yeah, a little bit of a tough shot there from that pocket, I would have thought. A good patient build-up by the Suns, too. I think the first couple of minutes, as you know, just kind of starting the match, but um, they sort of, you know, just kind of hacked it forward a little bit. But that's a much better build-up. But, uh, yeah, tough shot for Will. So Will Brody, very deliberate in his approach and pulls it to the near side. And the trees are starting to move a little bit. You can probably hear a tiny bit of breeze in the microphones. But I don't think it's anything that the players can't overcome with a little bit of care. As the ball's kicked back in and finds Angus Stiles. Goes down the line, finds Jake Brown. Local New South Wales product is Jake Brown from St George. Did well through the Suns Academy, uh, Swans Academy. Down the line, Alira Lira is a target. On there by Burke. He just got it from the contest. Swans have the numbers, but Here's Brody. He just stays on his feet, applies the pressure. He'd be happy for it to go out to create a stoppage. The Swans don't want it. And there's Rogers. Gets involved. The handball just puts it in the path of Styles. Styles does well. Busts through a tackle and gives a little bit of a give away there. And they find Ling. Put it out towards James Rose. Nutting. And Rose does well. Goes over the top back to Ling. Just chips the ball up. And working hard to find... The ball are uh, the Swans. Tom McCartan, I think it is. He's been impressive. Mobile. Goes long. Darcy Cameron's a target. Doing well on that occasion was Leslie. Jaska gets the handball off quickly. Leslie does well. Chain of handballs. Ends up with Hall. Good follow-up work there by the big boy in Jacob Sincock. But it was Schoenfeld who gets involved. Now Shear on this commentary wing goes long one-on-one -on -one contest Ballard was there at ground level was Bokey goes across the face it was a rolling ball and never really looked on target from the angle we had and just sneaks in for a minor so they are in front by two points now the Suns 1-4 playing 1-2 and Mackenzie Willis he had a look at it and Marty he just impacted the contest and gets back involved. Does well now. Soff, he has the run of the ball. Schoenfeld in pursuit. The block's provided for Soff. Well done. The kick is not a good one. McCartan makes it look good, though. Has a man over the top. It's Cameron. And he has one over the top. It's the big boy in Sincock. And 50 metres as the urgency just to guard the mark just created that little bit of edging over it. And 50 metres results. And how about the poise from McCartan just before? Obviously didn't get the best delivery, but uh, managed to spot up Darcy Cameron. He's already had uh, six disposals for the Swans, including four marks and three inside 50. So McCartan, we can already see in the first, uh, you know, 15 minutes of this game, um, you know, the kind of talent that he possesses as Darcy Cameron will surely make no mistake of this one. Comes in and makes no mistake. So Darcy Cameron, he has got two already, and he's going to be a danger when he's up forward. And you think with the with the Swans, as we have mentioned before, they are a bit depleted. Ten listed players and seven academy debutants out there today. But 
they've had the wood over the Suns incredibly for the last 13 consecutive games the Swans have won and the Suns haven't beaten Sydney in over five years in the NEFL. So um, I don't know whether or not that will play in the minds of some Suns players. I'm sure um, they don't sort of take into account those, those kinds of things. But um, I think it just goes to show the, the level of professionalism I think the Swans have. They've always produced really fantastic academy kids that can come into the NEFL and, and play their role. So uh, if they come away with a win today, it will be, um, be pretty special. And what sort of psychological edge do you really give that, given there's so many debutantes on both sides and such a change over a list between seasons? Any thoughts on that, Jess? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Like, I just think Sydney have been so successful um, that I think all the academy players will come in to the NEFL, you know, genuinely believing that they belong in the team. They just have such a great culture. For the Suns, I think they're building that. They've had great success the last couple of years in particular with their academy players. So you see a great contested mark. Is that McCartan again? Yeah, it is McCartan again. It was Parker involved there as well. And McCartan takes a very good contested mark. Go back and shoot for goal. Much in the ilk of his brother, of course. The, uh, the St Kilda spearhead. We'll see how he develops. And, but we're seeing a, uh, a fine young man develop here. From St Joseph's. Near Geelong. 192 centimetres, already 82 kilos, so he's a fair lump, starting to develop, kicks it, and he pulls it. And just a one-point results. His second behind of the day, but up to seven disposals and five marks. He's absolutely on fire in the moment, McCartan. Three inside 50s. So the Suns might just have to look at maybe a couple little adjustments of how they set up their defence. Heron has the ball from the kick in. Mackenzie Willis. He gave it to him. Goes out wide. Jacob Dawson. Kicks one short. Finds Foster. So a lot of the local youngsters combining. And Schoenfeld now has the ball. Not quite a local. All the way from WA. Finds another fellow from WA in Calamarchi. A little bit of waxing, and Schoenfeld has it back again. So they're just edging their way up the field. As well, gets around Styles, and then finds Eddie Sansbury. Can forgive him for being a little bit of out of nick. Hasn't played for a little while. Of course, had a game with Broadbeach, I believe, last year in the QAFL. Burke to Dawson. It was touched off the boot, so it'll be play on. Baru just picked the pocket of his Swans defender, came up with it and said, Thank you very, very much. And an easy goal for Emmanuel Baru. And a little bit against the run of play, but again, it was a considered build-up by the Suns in the way that they got the ball inside forward 50. Yeah, Baru, another exciting talent. Um, as I was alluding to before with the Suns Academy, the last couple of years in particular, they've really developed uh, some great young players. Baru is one of them, part of the Under-19 Academy, alongside... Um, Boki, who's out there today, as well as Foster and Burke, I believe, are all in their under-19 academy um, and will obviously, you know, want to make their mark at NEFL level in 2018 after getting the taste of, of the competition last year. So um, Baru is definitely an eye-catching talent, that's for sure. So the Suns regain the lead by a point, 16 playing 15. Ball back in the middle. Is that man? He lays a tackle and the ball tied up underneath. Plenty of talent on display here. Neeful, round four. Thanks to our broadcast partner in Bar TV as Aaron Hall comes away. Finds Burke at half forward. It was a scrubby kick. But Burke lays it out for Sansbury. The defender wasn't happy. The Swans defender might have been Maybaum. So a little bit of confusion in the back half of the ground. And the veteran, fair to say that, Eddie Sansbury, lines up. Forty-nine metres. It looks good off the boot. Does it have the legs? It does. So the former North Melbourne goal sneak back in the NEFL after a year hiatus via Aspley. And uh, how old is Eddie Sansbury? It, uh, he'd have to be in his early 30s. I don't have any data on him these days. But uh, when you've got somebody of that 
experience, just being able to guide the young players around, that certainly helps, Jess. Of course, and he is a former Aspley co-captain and NEFL Premiership player as well and um, been playing in the NEFL for a number of years before, I guess you can say, semi-retiring um, and moving to the Gold Coast to join the Suns in, an, in a um, development role. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, obviously he's still got it, Kanga. I think we can say that. He knows where the goals are. Like riding a bike. <laughs> The only thing you can't do is probably ride it for as far as he used to, yeah. if to use that analogy. Knows all the skills, all the tricks of the trade. Crosley and Cameron. Hall, Archie. Want to give it off over the top. Finds a player there. Well done by Foster. Scrubby kick inside forward 50. That wasn't what they wanted because they probably had some other options. She was... The man forced to try and spoil, couldn't do so as the Swans bring it out. And the good mark taken there by Parker under the pressure of Archie. Parker goes down the line. And Amadi and also Heron were there. And the arm of Amadi got on it but couldn't keep it in play or, or pluck it for a mark. And have a throw in. So right in front of us here in the commentary position here at Fankhauser Reserve. Beautiful complex, worth getting down to. Boundary umpire Braden Press throws it back in. Brody Archie stands in the tackle, just put Foster under pressure. Now they might just keep it in. The Swans do, they get it going their way. So a bit of an error there from the Suns. Willis couldn't take it with him. McCartan does well in the path of Amadi. Bumped off the ball by Hall, but still picks it up. Trying to come away, Schoenfeld. Styles gets the kick away. It's rolling, rolling. And happy to concede there was Leslie. So those little errors just can be costly, even at this level, because the stand of the NEFL is really picking up where you can be hurt with the slightest of errors. I think the Swans have done really well to pressure the Suns um, in this first quarter and just uh, keep in touch with them on the scoreboard. Um, but we can see when, when Gold Coast get a little bit of space and they're able to sort of be patient and hit up targets. I think that's where their strength um, comes through. But uh, but so far this first quarter, I think the Swans have done really well um, to sort of keep it as, as close contest as it is. 24 and a half minutes gone. Crossley had front spot. Well done on that occasion by Schumach. Chain of handballs. Will they get this out? Yes, they will. And virtually it is that man, Schumach. McCartan, strong. He's very strong up there. He's going to prove a handful for Jasker. One-on-one, -on -one. Leslie and also Aaliyah Aaliyah. A little bit of help came from the Suns' defence. Heron, he's going to get it back, is he? No. Dawson, he doesn't mind the hard ball. Rose tries to inject himself. Are they just messing around with it here, the Suns' defence? The Swans apply the pressure. Now a little bit of space. Dawson is the target. Well done with the one hand, the pluck. It came from Shear, has the short one. Ballard can't handle it. Shear again. Back to Dawson. Or in fact, it's... Yes, it might be Dawson out there. Misses his target at half forward. Sansbury's there and eludes Maybaum as well. I think the Suns did well to get out of danger there. They certainly were fumbling it around in their defensive 50. And uh, to get a boundary throw in at half forward, I think, is a good result for what we just saw. It's a good mark there by Shear. Crosley had front spot. Cameron reaches over. The handball came over the top. Dawson. The Suns through Archie. Just misses his target on that occasion in Sandsbury. And the ball spills. Out of bounds. So right near the behind post. The Gold Coast Suns attack here at Fankhauer's Reserve. Kicking to the northern end of the ground. For those playing along at home, welcome to Michael Price, who's usually with me in co-commentary. Thanks for your message. Happy to be here. Darcy Cameron does well. Emerging with the ball are the Swans' defence. Just go high. And just arriving in the nick of time to beat Styles for the mark was Mackenzie Willis with the big fist to keep the ball inside forward 50. Just noticing that last boundary throw in, then it's uh, Dreghorn who uh, was, I guess, the, the ruck for Suns. It was also sort of Brumley as well, um, taking over from uh, Braden Crosley when he's not on the field. So uh, definitely a mismatch, I think, they're coming up against the strength of Cameron. 
Oh, that's right. Some AFL experience against some real younger players. Nutting and Rose involved. Emma Carton. This time he couldn't take it. And the ball spills over the boundary line right in front of the interchange gates as boundary umpire Aaron Decky, the high school teacher from the Sunshine Coast. Best part of two to 300 AFL boundary games he's officiated. He throws the ball back into play. And of course, the Neefle is a great breeding ground for our officials as well, Dawson and Archie. That's a neat little kick. It had to be. Finds nutting. Now, does it open up? No, it doesn't because they couldn't find Shea. And Alira Alia gets a little bit of help there on that occasion from Dent. They're just messing around with it here, though, the, the Swans. A bit quick. They're going to turn it over, and Baru is back there. So just backward of centre, Baru. And there's nobody behind him. At least for the Swans. They decide to go back and find Mackenzie Willis instead. Just try and open a little bit of space up. It goes over the top. That looked like a free kick for mine. Umpire says no. Brody says, I'll get up and get the ball anyway. Feeds the ball back inside. And Burke it was. He just couldn't quite find the target. And on that occasion, it was Mills. The ball stayed in, so he got back involved again. Burke. Now to Brody again. And the ball is just bobbed up in the air. A dangerous spot, but Mayborn was just there to take the easiest of marks as he arrived in time. Set off to Darcy Cameron. Crossley mans the mark. That kick's not a good one. It'll hit the ground. It's not what you want in your defensive 50. Cordell just chips the ball up. Well done there to Schumach. Goes down the line. That didn't look good off the boot. And it wasn't. Just waiting for him to do something enormously good, Schumach, so I can call him Schumacher and do a car noise. That's what I do. Still plenty of time left, Kango, in the game. Boundary umpire throws it in again as the siren sounds. We've had just the five goals in the first quarter, and the Gold Coast Suns, they hold sway 3 4 22 to the Sydney Swans 2 4 16. It's been a game where you think the, the Suns have looked in control, but some good efforts, particularly from the Swans, from McCartan and, and Cameron, and a couple of their experienced uh, players look like they have the ability to really take the game away from the Swans at different points in time. Jess Webster. Absolutely. I think it is actually quite a, a fascinating battle because you think that the Suns have more strength across the board, but what we're seeing in that first quarter is that Tom McCartan, he's definitely a player of the future, and Darcy Cameron in the ruck, and then I guess the using Aaliyah, Aaliyah in multiple positions across the ground, it kind of gives the Swans a bit of structure that maybe the, the Suns are lacking. So um, I think for the, for the Suns to be six points ahead at quarter time is probably reflective of um, when they're able to get out in space, they're able to sort of create better forward 50 entries. But um, when you look at the stats, they're only leading inside 50s by one, 13 to 12 clearances are even, 10 to 8 the Suns way and hit outs we can see um, going the, the Swans way, 12-6. So quite an even battle um, already to start this game and um, I think it's a, a bit of an arm wrestle at the moment, Kanga. So goals to Sandsbury, Baru and also the first one of the day to Brody and for the Sydney Swans, it was Darcy Cameron with a couple. We'll take a break and come back with the second quarter in just a moment. It is the Gold Coast Suns here. And this round four Neffel Clash presented with our broadcast partner, uh, Bar TV. And, of course, the Neffel proudly supported by Elastoplast. We'll be back here at Fankhauser Reserve with the Suns up by six points.
Welcome back to Fankhauser Reserve. Round four of the NEFL on NEFL TV. Thanks to our broadcast partner, Bar TV. And, of course, the NEFL proudly supported by Elastoplast, our major sponsor there. And uh, Mark Kennedy's my name. Jess Webster is with me. And at quarter time, it's the Gold Coast Suns 3-4-22, leading the Sydney Swans 2-4-16. Jess, this quarter will be pretty important, I suppose, to, to see, one, a little bit of breeze kicking up, and two, I think we're going to get a better look and understanding of how well these uh, these new additions, the debutants of both sides, will adapt to Neville footy. Yeah, the Swans started well, but uh, I think it's it's a, goal, a game for the Gold Coast Suns to win. So Archie, the ball away, Mayborn, got the ball down. One there by Styles. Not sure where to go off half back, though. This way, that way, he's gone. So not much talk around. And sheer it is. With the free kick, 60 metres from goal. Plenty of numbers back. And just chips the ball up. That's not a good kick. And it's just mopped up there by Maybaum for the Swans. They just can't have, you know, pretty ordinary entries like that inside forward 50. Yes, yeah, Swans definitely have too much class in that regard. Um, Suns just have to play smarter. Playing the advantage, Sof just running in. Here's Rose and Nutting. It's a good race, but Rose, he had too much of the advantage on that occasion. That fast break from one end to the other was too telling, and Rose kicks the first for the Swans in this quarter, the first for the quarter from either side, and scores are tied up 3 4 22 apiece, and we've played about a minute of this second quarter. Such an exciting matchup, that one between Rose and, and Nutting. Of course, Rose is uh, Sydney's leading uh, Nifo goal kicker last year. And um, it's probably started the season, oh, I guess, a bit quiet from what we're used to. But kicked a, a ripper goal two weeks ago against Brisbane Lions. And again, showed what he's capable of just there. Um, Nutting's got his work cut out for him. But um, I think he's loving the challenge out there today. His ability to kick bags of goals mm. to James Rose. That medium half forward, he can push through the midfield. Just wonder how many AFL games might he have played if he was at another side other than the mighty Sydney Swans. I won't know because right now he's in those wonderful Swans colours. Crosley gets the ball down. Hall just tries to get the ball away. Does so. Baru just feeds it back to Hall. They misses the target. Archie's there playing the wicket keeper. Now Hall. Just a little bit of waxing. That's a way to rack up some possessions. Baru. Gives it back and misses the handball again. So just messing around with it. Forced to kick it in a real hurry. Crosley's there at centre-half forward. Schoenfeld at ground level. And win the ball. Burke feeds it out. Trying to handballs. Archie slips away from one. Chips the ball up. Looking for a target. Looking for Shear. Can't find him. Sandsbury off to Shear. Handball smothered. They'll come away with it. Might have been Dent there. The ball goes to ground. They might get it again. Leslie feeds the ball out. Hall. Again, missed the target. This is just basic stuff. They have to retreat. Go back to Jasker. Puts on the skates. And looks for Schoenfeld. Misses the target. So just a little bit of a comedy of errors as Mayborn and Schoenfeld see the ball over line with a little bit of bump. Shoulder to shoulder action. It's a good way to keep the opposition in the contest when you keep fumbling and not hitting your targets, isn't it, Kanga? So uh, the Suns, you know, they, I think they have the ability to break this game open, but they just they have to fix that skill efficiency. Otherwise, the Swans will make them pay. Cameron, the ball down. Hall off the deck. Schoenfeld does well, although tackled by Amadi and a ripper. So 60 metres out on the far side of the ground. The Suns attack. They're kicking to the southern end. The Swans to the northern end. If you've just joined us and the scores are dead level. Three and a half minutes gone. Second quarter. Free kick in the ruck contest will go the way of Braden Crosley. For the Suns. He kicks it directly into the man on the mark. So not a good outcome there for the Suns. Leslie forced to retreat from the kick to try and mop it up. Alira Lear does well to put pressure on Leslie in the ball. It's over the boundary line. Throw in just forward to centre on that outer wing. Swans slightly going to their end here. Or the more affirmative position on the ground. Cameron just palms it down. Plenty of players around the contest. And the other factor here is 
Um, Jess Webster, 22 players versus 23. The Swans have only gone out with 22 today, so one less rotation. How will that stack up for them as the game emerges, especially with all those debutants? Well, you think that Gold Coast will have the fitness um, to, to run out the match, but saying that, as I alluded to earlier, if they, um, if, if they keep turning the ball over and, and effectively gifting the Swans chances, um, you know, it'll keep the, the scoreboard pretty close, I reckon. And that's a good tackle there in the middle of the ground. Baru it is. The advantage was taken. Mackenzie Willis, we haven't seen much of him so far today. Schoenfeld, he comes out to meet it, takes the ball, just eludes his Swans opponent. The, had to get a, rid of it quickly, did Baru. The Sydney Swans, the tackler, came up very well and did very well. That was Schumacher, Schumach, who closed in, put the pedal to the metal. Darcy Cameron, the ball down, but stealing it is Brody. Just wasn't sure where to go. Managed to get the handball away. Hall, is it away quickly? Just waxed with Ballard. Now he'll pick it up. What can he do? Slips out of the tackle, gets a quick kick away. Using his strength there with Shea. Kicks it around the corner quickly. I won't be on this going out of bounds, and it does so. And so the Suns, they keep it in their attacking area. And again, not the cleanest bit of play getting around. A bit of, bit of nothingness and not really open, free-flowing football just at the moment. Cameron and Crosley. Crosley does it at ground level as well. Around the corner, the attempt was made by Sandsbury. Didn't quite get it cleanly, and the ball spills over. We'll have a throw next to the point post yet again. Just some of the leading possession winners. McCartan up to nine disposals and six marks, and Jake Brown eight for the Swans. Aaron Hall up to 14 for the Suns. So the Suns have the numbers here. Baru is underneath it. A tackle on that occasion from Loon, Christian Loon. One of the Swans' debutantes. And the ball tied up yet again in the Suns' forward half. Yes, the Suns are leading the clearances 14 to 10 at the moment. But Aaron Hall and Will Brody have eight between them. There's Darcy Cameron that got the kick away. Just bounced inside the line so it will be thrown in as it bounced over six and three quarter minutes gone of this second quarter scores locked up you'd say the suns have had the better of it but the swans have just been able to break out and score cameron gets it down well, had plenty of hit outs today i'm sure up against Braden crosley who's no slouch bit of a baby huey he's been about that size since he's about 17 years of age Braden crosley Big boy, but Darcy Cameron, he's no slouch. 204 and 100 kilos as well on hands and knees on this occasion is that man. Lays the tackle on Brody. Swans will come away with it. Here's Ling. Emerges. He looked to get on his left, but instead handballs. Stoddart goes from the back half. One on one with Rose and Nutting. Nutting does well. Just brings the ball to ground, then provides the block. And allows the Suns to take the ball back inside forward 50. Hall's there. You'd say he's a fair chance. Can't quite grasp it. Maybaum's there. Styles is there as well. They'll feed the ball backwards. What's going to happen here? Under pressure. So the Suns are doing well. Hall emerges with it. Goes around with the check side and squeezes it through. So the Gold Coast Suns, it's been ugly. The pressure was high, but they got the result. Jess Webster as they move out for 428 to the Sydney Swans, 3 4 22. Eight and a quarter minutes gone in the second quarter here at Bankhauser Reserve. Absolutely. It was just sheer pressure, wasn't it, that, that caused that opportunity for the Suns? And um, someone like Aaron Hall is always dangerous in that situation and uh, obviously threw it on the boot and got his first goal of the day to give the Suns some breathing space. I mean, they've, like you've mentioned, they've, we feel like they've controlled the contest so far, but not convincingly. Um, and they need to sort of take more of those opportunities in attack like, like we just saw. Because um, we've seen a lot of fumbles so far today, but that was a good goal to uh, give them a six-point lead. So Alira Alira in the ruck. Up against Bromley. Play on is the call. In fact, the umpire will bring it up. I think there was more in sympathy than anything else because it wasn't outside the centre circle, which is, the I think, the uh, the point where they bring the ball back. So Brumley and Aaliyah Aaliyah, the greater athleticism of Aaliyah. It's the day. McCartan, this time he's wrapped up by Jasker. Has to kick off the ground. Amati's there. He's quickly wrapped up. So the ball at ground level. 
The Suns emerging with it was Dawson. Off to Foster. They go out wide. Schoenfeld has a run out of it. Run of it and takes the mark. Just backward to centre and out of side. Has the chip inside. There's Dawson. Jaska. And again, they're happy to run the ball from the back half, trying to put their players under pressure. Heron to Leslie. Leslie down the line. And over the top of Bokey's head, just tracking back and just seeing it over the boundary line, was Lachlan Dent. I think it was good work there from Aaliyah to just sort of get in a position where it made Leslie second guess where he was going to kick the ball and eventually went to a 50-50 contest and it spilled out of bounds. It was because Aaliyah was further up the ground and was going to mop up any sort of long bomb down the line. So good positioning from Aaliyah. So Aaliyah takes it out of the ruck on this occasion, uses his experience, Rose. And also Willis is there. We'll see this one. Two AFL season players, one-on-one -on -one contest. Mackenzie Willis. Lays the tackle, but Rose does well. Gets the handball away. A kick from Dylan Smith. Inside forward 50. Amati's there. Heron just tries to push him off. And taking the ball over the line is Jared Mill. So the ball inside forward 50 for the Swans. They attack. 40 metres around from their goal. Out of side. Here at Fankhauser Reserve. The Suns by six points. Brumley. Give that one to him. Kick the ball away on that occasion. Was the Suns. It goes over the back of the contest. Schoenfeld. Plenty to beat here. Just coughs the ball up. Aaliyah. Ball back from whence it came. The spoil was Heron. It's the ball up. Tries to keep it in. Probably foolishly so because Rose is right there. Stoddart. Can't handle it. Gives it back to Rose. But the ball did actually travel out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. 75 metres around from the Swans' goal, that out of side here. This is where the Suns can be exposed with the Lear in the ruck and probably a little bit less experience with young Brumley in the ruck. Not to say that his effort won't be so right up there anyway and his intensity. Swans take it inside forward 50 again. Leslie and also Cameron. Heron's there. Just kicks it to space, more in hope than anything else. Mills is there for the Gold Coast, does well. Just kept beeline the footy and then wins the free kick. So well done to him. A yeah, great reward for effort, wasn't it? Just kept the ball alive and earned himself a free kick by being first to the footy. He's still in his defensive 50. He's asked to go now. Kicks it to Dawson. That's had two bites of the cherry because the kick wasn't good. Ling was a man who intercepted it. Dawson oh, to Schoenfeld. He dropped the ball and gets it away again. The tackle was a little bit high on Foster. Umpire says he ducked. And the ball went over the line anyway. Stoddart involved there again. Looks like a bit of a racehorse, Riley Stoddart. It's built for a bit of speed at the moment. I'm sure... Being on the Swans list, he'll find a little bit of that bulk we know and love from those Sydney Swans players who love their hard contested ball. Dawson goes through. The tackle came from Stanford. And we will have another ball up. Again, thanks for joining us here on Neeful TV. A round four clash here at Southport. Thanks to our broadcast partner. Bar TV and also the sponsor of the Neeful in Elastoplast. Ball right in front of us here in the commentary position. Ballard had the ball wrapped up or knocked away from him and then he wrapped up a tackle on Frangos. One of the debutants, Chris Frangos. So Crosley, a little bit more experience back into... The game going up against Alia Alia. Crosley takes the front spot, gets a tap away, but Alia, he's dispossessed by Dawson on hands and knees. He gets it again. China handballs, goes out on that occasion to Verdorn, has his kick smothered. Mills does well. Now Brody, now to Jacob Dawson again, has one short and finds him in Calamachi. He's got Boki out forward, but not a lot of tall targets. Have to make sure this kick is, hits its target. Goes up Ballard to target. He's being held, so he'll win the free kick. You can see that a mile away. Even a, an amateur like me could see that one. 
The lack of positioning and uh, a little bit of co body contact in the right way. The Suns are doing really well defensively, I think. The Suns, like I said, when they go forward, they're not convincing. They're always under pressure. Archie, around the corner. Boki couldn't take it. Carton pushes back, gets involved there. Pushing back there with Shear as well. And the ball goes over the line, which is probably a good result for the Suns because the Swans look like they might have just been about to emerge with the ball at their defensive 50. Six points to margin. 15 minutes gone of this second quarter. So the ball at ground level. Picking it up and having a go at it was Brumley. Well under him, but he was ramped up immediately. He's back in the ruck again. It's a good second effort from the young kid. He's just pushed forward while Crossley is just sitting a kick behind the play. Around the corner is Hall. And just bounces. So I thought it might have had enough on it. A little bit of breeze almost for mine. He's actually favouring the northern end. He just has whipped up a little bit. So maybe he dropped a little bit short as there's an error from the kick in. And the ball will be brought back to the top of the goal square and be thrown up. As it might have been Jack Maybaum who overstepped the goal square. Not errors you want in your back half, Jess. No, they were doing so well, but... Let's see if Aaron Hall could bob up for another one. I already had a couple of shots on goal from this congested area. Took a fresh airy. Not happy to concede the Swans. Kick comes out of defence. And Foster just tracks back nicely. Takes a nice mark. He's kept his eye on the ball. Plenty of players inside forward 50. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does. He just pops it up more in hope. It just drops in the breeze. But drops into the arms of a Swan. And the Swans, they can repel again. Oh. And that's a very nice contested mark there by Darcy Cameron. I have the numbers down here. And unable to take the mark. It was soft. I thought he might have just about hung on to it for a moment. James Rose has pushed up into the midfield. Or have come off for a... Uh, a rotation even. In fact, now he's been marked up there in the forward half. So just try and swing some changes. Brody just tries to extract himself from the clutches of the Swans' defence. It was Cordell with the tackle. And the ball just goes over the boundary line. Jake Brown is right there with it. And I don't think you can get a position closer to us than where this throw is going to happen. Just Webster. We could just about catch it off the boundary umpire. Get a good look at Crosley against Cameron here. Shoulder to shoulder they go. Give that one to Crosley, but Cameron just does well. Gets the handball away. Inside forward 50 was Parker. Rose comes out to meet it. And it was Sincock who did well. Rose again goes around the corner. Yes! Rose with a couple now. Both in this second quarter. And he narrows the margin. Back to one point. So Rose with two. And the score for the Swans moves to 4-4-28. The Suns, 4-5-29. And again, the Suns have had plenty of ball in their forward line in the second quarter. The Swans have been able to take their opportunities going forward. A goal against the flow of play, uh, really, when we saw the Suns were, you know, obviously locking the ball inside their forward 50. But, um, again, it goes back to that rut contest. And while Crosley run the tap, it was Darcy Cameron's work at ground level, which then fed the handball out, quick kick inside forward 50 and let James Rose do his thing and just curled it around beautifully for his second goal. So we're seeing the, the key players for the Swans really stand up. Um, and through that, they can bring in, um, I guess, those younger academy players um, into the game. So um, they're doing really well to, to sort of keep in touch on the scoreboard. Um, but the Suns need to take their opportunities while they can. Um, otherwise, the Suns, uh, sorry, the Swans are such a professional outfit that they'll never go away. Um, so a bit of work to do, I think, for Gold Coast. Just a little bit of mopping up more than anything else. We're going to restart again. Crosley feeds it out to Brody. Baru's the target, taps it in front of himself, tries to get it again. It's the ball just going his way, gives it to Hall. A little bit of space for Hall. He's generally a good finisher, but not on this occasion. And Aaron Hall registers a minor. 
Getting plenty of it. 16 disposals, five clearances, and that was one goal, two behinds now for Aaron Hall. So he gets a bit of it, but it can be so much more damaging. Sincock was the target from the kick in. Styles. It's Corral, so he goes backwards. Well done there by Ballard. That's holding the ball for mine. Yes, it is. And Charlie Ballard, boy from the SNFL, Sturt. In the southern suburbs, in the southern suburbs of Adelaide. Originally from Mitcham. Not far from Sturt as well. And Charlie Ballard clearly fancies himself. On the right from 40 metres. It comes back around and that is a great kick for goal. I was a little bit iffy just given the way the breeze is pushed up and it's pushing to this northern end against him. Whether he was going to be able to slot that. But that is a beautiful, beautiful conveyance of the Sharon, Jess Webster. Yeah, very well executed, wasn't it? We just saw him think his way through it. And then as it came off the boot, we just watched it curl in and watched the goal umpire move um, into, I guess, the position to wave for the goal to go through but yeah it was a, a great goal and I think it was really important for the Suns to respond after that James Rose goal again just sort of brings that margin back out to eight points in their favour and it's sort of been that mark uh, so far for the entire game So Marty now in the ruck just changing things around Darcy Cameron down forward and also Aaliyah Aaliyah so they're just looking to stretch and McCartan, so they've gone very much forward. Brown gets the handball away. Amati just kicks it forward. Alir Alir can't take it. They're working hard there with the Swans. Brown, dangerous proposition here. The ball bounces Ooh. over the back of Darcy Cameron. It was Mackenzie Willis on Darcy Cameron, and that's a mismatch. Willis at 182 centimetres, giving away 22 centimetres in that marking contest. Kick was awry. Baru takes the kick in from Mackenzie Willis. In fact, it was Sincock down there who's as big as Darcy Cameron. Hall kicks it short. Baru can't take it. Aaliyah on the left. Goes up high through the hands of Mackenzie Willis, but he'll stay on his feet and try and mop it up. Gets the kick away. The Suns have the numbers here. They want the ball to stay in. They go back in board. Jaska looks to the lead of Ballard. Gets back on his feet after he couldn't take it. Very good tackle by Stanford. And the ball tied up right in front of us here in the commentary position. The 22 minutes played in the second quarter and the margin's seven points. Do you feel like the Suns should be further in front? Yeah, I do. I think uh, the amount of ball that they've had. There's a differential of 60 possessions, and they're eight points ahead. Archie runs on to the Brody kick up towards Sandsbury. And he just ripped off it there by the good tackle of Dylan Smith. And they have plenty of experience, but just if you once your leg speed starts going, as Eddie Sandsbury has, it makes you a bit of an easier target. Yeah, he just tried to be a bit tricky there by just sort of handballing out in front and hopefully playing for a free kick. So it didn't quite work out there for Eddie's uh, sake, but uh, bound to throw nonetheless. So using his body well there was Darcy Cameron. On there by Brown. Just gets a kick forward and finds Soff. There's a target there. Darcy Cameron now back to Brown. Has one come off the bench. It's Ling. So they've got a little bit of space here. The kick's not a good one. It needed to go a little bit higher. And just kicked it straight into the waiting arms of Jack Leslie. And the Suns, they'll be happy. And the Swans, they'll be a bit cranky that they've wasted an opportunity. Jasker, it's off to Nutting. Nutting kicks it low and hard and the turnover will come. So not a good kick. A good couple of kicks in field play. Brown just kicks it high and says, right here, boys. There's a little bit of space going high there. The Swans player. And that was Loon. Couldn't bring it down. Imagine taking a specky on debut. Kanga, he almost got it. Not quite there, though. Didn't bring it down. Didn't quite get two hands on it either. Aaliyah and Crosley. Hall, plenty of it. Slips through the Ling tackle. And he'll have to do it again. Well done there by Ling. Gets the ball inside. And come away. Shia. 
Puts it in the path of Schoenfeld and right in front of the Swans. Interchange. Or in front of their bench at least. Ball's ushered over the line. Well into time on. 24 and a half minutes gone of this second quarter. And it is the Suns by seven. Crossley from the back. And that's holding the ball. So very good tackle there. That time from Schumach. Rusep long and high. McCartan's a target. Leslie came through, had hands on it, just trying to evade the tackle. That almost should have been holding the ball for me because he had some opportunity, did James Rose, but the ball will be tied up. And stays inside the Swans forward 50. And they're pressuring the Swans. Still time enough to get a late goal before half time to bring the margin back to a point. Crosley to Hall. Coming off the bench there nicely was Dawson. Couldn't get the handball off to Nutting efficiently. Puts Archie under some pressure. Stands in the tackle. Back to Dawson. We'll give it off. Now to Shear. It's a better build up. Sandsbury, he'll use his body. Stoddart was expecting the contact. Didn't come. Ballard has it. Gives it back. A little bit uh, unconventional. Shear feeds the ball backwards. Has Dawson just assessing the situation. Goes in board. Finds Crosley. Has the run of Willis, but he just misses the target. Mills comes through, gives it quickly to Shear. So they've just been sloppy with their disposal. Shear kicks it up. Ballard's there. Dawson's there as well. He has a little bit of space. The kick finds Sansbury right on the boundary line, who has one in board. He was looking for Dreghorn, but Maybaum just saves the day for the Swans. Comedy of errors, Jess Webster. It's not pretty, is it? Uh, the Suns just messing it up at the moment. McCartan stands in the marking contest. Willis does well. Comes through the line of the ball and then kicks it up the line. It manages to just hug the boundary line. Ballard gives it to Schoenfeld. Clever give. Assessing the options. Just pops it up, looking for the target. Styles has the league speed and he says, let's get this out of here and goes to the racehorse in James Rose. Hits it over the back. He's going to have a bit of a paddock here to work in. Nobody forward. Nutting gets back quickly. Has targets up forward. One of them is Loon. Gives it off. Running on with Styles and just sprays it off to the right. Opportunity wasted. And again, the Gold Coast have had it all their way. And the Swans don't need many opportunities. And it could have been a dangerous a goal. Could have been a dangerous goal for the Suns had the Swans been accurate. I really wanted to see James Rose take off then. I know he was trying to spot off a target, but I just thought, oh, just take him on. You've got a couple of metres on nutting. Just go for a run. It would have been potential goal of the year, I think. But uh, here we are, and the Suns at half back trying to reload. Archie. This one's short. Dawson will have time to get back on it. Gives it quickly. Feeds it off. Burke. Willis. Tries to get round Mayborn. Forced to spoil. Burke again. Dawson. Good chain of handballs. Archie goes up the line. Finds Ballard. To get the binoculars on him. I'm not sure if he's just growing a little mushtaka. Make him look a little bit older. Crosley does well. Chips it up and finds Boki. So Boki. We saw a goal. In a similar type position by Ballard earlier. Took a very good effort. This one's, this angle's probably a little bit tougher. What do you think, Jess Webster? Well, if, if he kicks it, I reckon the celebration will be worth it. Comes in on the left. Looks across in front. Plenty of players there. It's spoiled and rushed over the line. So the margin re-established to seven points. Approaching 29 minutes of the second quarter. A little bit of a better build-up that time from the Suns at least. Stoddart goes long down the middle. Ball almost over the back. Not done so. Just sharing it here. Looking for the fast break. Rose. We'll have to try and bust through a few. Can do it. Of Jasker. One-on-one contest. Armadi and also Willis. It just sits up. Gives Armadi a chance as Willis just... 
taps it over the boundary line, but that's not a bad result for the Swans inside their forward 50. And from that kick in, with the breeze now pushing up to that northern end, that fast break is an, an, is an entertaining and enticing option for the Swans. It's definitely picking up, isn't it? You can see how it's affecting shots on goal down one end, and, and we saw how quickly the Swans got it down the other end as the halftime siren sounds. So at halftime, it will be... The Gold Coast Suns are leading the way, 5-7-37. The Swans are 4-6-30, seven points to the margin here at Fankow's Reserve. It's this round four clash, of course, thanks to our broadcast partner in Bar TV and the Neeful, proudly supported by Elastoplast. How did you see that first half, Jess? Um, for me, it seemed to be a lot, of the swan, a lot of the Suns, but the Swans just chiming in at the right times to keep themselves close. I think you're right. And while we've made mention of the Suns and their skill or their disposal and their skill efficiency, you know, you've got to give the Swans credit, I think, for the pressure they're putting on the ball carrier and causing their turnovers and, and making opportunities for themselves because Suns have had the, the weight of possession. They're leading it 225 to 140 and that um, Aaron Hall's up to 20 disposals and Kalamachi and Jacob Dawson have had 19 each. And if you look at the Swans, it's, it's Jake Brown with 12 and Darcy Cameron with 12 as their leading possession winners. So they know they're not getting their hands first on the footy, but what they're doing is, is lots of pressure to, to turn the ball over and, um, and try and use their experienced heads to, uh, to send the ball forward. So I think the Swans are playing the game really well, knowing their strengths and limitations. Uh, for the Suns, like you mentioned, it's just about them and finding that bit of polish um, and hitting the targets. And I think in the second half, they'll run away if they can do that. Well, it is seven points at half time. The Suns do hold sway here. We'll be back after the break for this round four clash here at, at Fankow's Reserve. And it is the Gold Coast Suns and the Sydney Swans. And we'll be back after this break.
And welcome back to Fankhauser Reserve. It is the clash between the Gold Coast Suns and the Sydney Swans. We are at half time and the margin is seven points in favour of the Gold Coast Suns. It's been a little bit of a scrappy affair. Sydney Swans have taken more of their opportunities despite the fact that they trail and that's epitomised by the fact that the Gold Coast Suns have had 85 more possessions than Sydney in the first half. My name is Mark Kennedy. I'm joined by Jess Webster. A little bit lopsided in terms of the numbers, but the scoreboard's not that far apart, Jess. The other key indicators as well, the clearance is 23-20 in favour of the Suns and inside 50 is 25-24 in favour of Sydney. So around the ground, they're fairly even. Um, and let's see what, if the Suns can run away with it. So pretty even from the restart. Hall, he's been pretty big in terms of numbers in the first half. That'll be number 21 for him. Willis comes through. A little bit of space created for Burke. This will be a good start if it gets online. It doesn't. And to the near side. Does Burke go? So extends the margin to eight points. Uh, kicking with a bit of a breeze in this third quarter. The Sydney Swans. Armadi uh, takes a good mark there from the Maybomb kick. Assessing options. Is down the line. Rose is the flyer. Dragged off it was a Suns player. Heron lays the tackle, as does a Ling now for the Swans, and the ball's tied up on centre wing. We mentioned earlier today, seven debutants for the Swans, all academy players, and a couple of them have shown a bit today. Parker's up to ten disposals, and probably the leading disposal winner of those debutants today. Archie. Emerges with it. And that's a good kick. Unable to take it there with Shea. A bit of a worm burner. Dent comes back the other way. Scrubby kick into the breeze. All done there by the Swans. They mop it up. They're going to bring it through the middle of the ground. This is Brown. So Jake Brown is down deep. Mackenzie Willis is there. And the ball just dropped before Aaliyah Aaliyah could get there. And it was Mackenzie Willis able to mop it up. Goes out to Aaron Hall. He's already had the three disposals in this third quarter. That one wasn't a good one. He was looking for Archie. Mopping it up there was Soft. Soft inside forward 50. And coming across there was Nutting. Been a fascinating matchup, Jess, between Nutting and James Rose. Of course, Rose has had two goals in that first half, but Nutting's been more than competitive. Absolutely. I'd, you know, you'd have to say sort of Rose has done his bit with a couple of goals. I saw another skill error there from the Suns resulting in a boundary throw in. But take nothing away from Connor Nutting. He's competed well and, um, you know, a couple of contests he's definitely won um, and done his bit, uh, played his role for his team as well. So, yeah, I've loved that matchup. Scrubby kick from Dawson. He's had 22 disposals. That wasn't one of his finest. Hall lays a tackle on Ling. Almost a 360. Armadi breaks a tackle off Crosley, then gets the kick half forward. Mills with the spoil. Soft, he went out of bounds. So the umpire called that, was right on the spot. And will be thrown in some 80 metres around from the goal of the Gold Coast Suns. Uh, in fact, of the Sydney Swans as they look to attack into a little bit of a breeze. I think it favours the Suns horribly one way. Might be worth a goal. It picks up every now and then, and then it sort of goes back to neutral. So it's uh, been a bit of a weird one today. And Lingen Hall there, just happy to... Dawson lays a tackle on Cordell that time. Here's Cameron. Takes the ball out of the ruck, gets it forward. Punch comes from Willis. Well done there to get the kick away was Parker. Up in the air there, McCartney was good in the first half. Plenty of marks. Looked very, very dangerous. He looks a player. Willis, he's dragged down. In fact, he's slung down is the call. So he'll win the free kick. A bit of a dangerous tackle. It was Jake Brown who imparted that upon him. I think he 
might be all right. It's got a corky. Just flexing to try and get some mobility there. Show of strength between the two ruckmen. Dawson right in the thick of it. Nothing doing there again. So we'll have another ball up. Yet again, so a bit of a tense opening to this second half. Free kick on play. It'll go the way of the big boy. And Darcy Cameron, two first quarter goals when he pushed forward. Looked very dangerous. Aaliyah is the target. Has the space and... I was going to say takes the mark, but the umpire didn't pay it. Jake Brown turns around, puts it to the top of the square. Leslie's going to be the man. He stands tall, takes the mark. You could see from a little way that he had the big frame to get the arms up there. Great defensive mark, and Cameron's pass to Aaliyah was perfect as well, but just couldn't quite get his hands on it. We'll get enough of it, sorry. Nutting in the back pocket. Up towards the wing, Maybaum. He's pushed out of the contest, so he'll win the free kick. Doing well to keep it in their forward half here at the moment. The Sydney Swans. Willis has front spot, but Rose from the back. Does well. Plays on quickly. Frangos and comes out and gives it nicely to Soff. So good build up there from the Swans. And it was highlighted by that James Rose mark. He is a great player, isn't he, across half forward? I mean, we, we mentioned it earlier about how many, or you mentioned it, how many AFL games he might have played if he was playing for a different club. Of course, it's very hard to, to crack into the Swans lineup. And Soft comes in and misses. So a disappointing miss under the circumstances. It was a very gettable shot. And the Suns live to fight along with a seven point lead. Probably got away with one there. Willis got the handball. Under a little bit of pressure. Jasker is down the line. Shear. Ball on line for at least a marking contest. We'll have a throw in. Right in front of the beautiful clubhouse here at Fankhauser Reserve. Home of the Southport Sharks. It's been a, an odd game, I think, this one. And, and we've seen the stages where, you know, we've seen these little bursts of play from either team. And then obviously a few minutes like this where it's just a bit of a stalemate. It's, it's hard to see who might actually break this game open or will it, or will it ever break open at the moment. Um, I mean, the, the margin has never grown beyond eight points. The Suns have just always kept their noses in front the entire game. So qu quarter and a bit to go, quarter and a half to go. So the smother on the hall kick. Well done. They will emerge. Soft. It's a short kick away. Finds McCartan. Build up there. Goes to the big boy. Looking for the big boy there. Sincock. Amadi's there though. Good pick up from Sincock again. Brown's there. He's under pressure. He went to ground. He's going to be in trouble. Holding the ball is the call. So the Suns will escape. Just uh, was happy to submit or go to ground to try and either win the free kick for too high or try and elude the tackle, whichever came first, and it wasn't to be. He definitely took them on, though, so it's holding the ball every day of the week. Willis. Out to Mills. It's one further afield there. That's Leslie. We have some free players here. Nutting's just in front of him. He'll find the ball now, although the kick isn't a good one. Does it stay in? It does. Nutting. That's over the top. The Swans, though, just not being able to complete the, the skills effectively. The Suns giving the Swans some chances. Willis emerges with the ball, gets it back to the wing. Contest came from Ballard. And now they come again. And Jake Brown it is. Keeps racking them up. Just possession number 15. Not sure where to go. So the size to go high. Amadi! Had to sit. And the way the ball was dropping in the breeze, you could just see that he was always going to be in the most beneficial position to put the arms up and take it. Well, really, what was an easy mark in the finish? And again, we saw a couple of just hacked balls forward from the Suns that were picked off by the Swans. And then there's just sheer pressure now that's created this forward 50 opportunity. So need to convert here. 
Amadi straight in front. He has absolutely butchered that. I don't think I could slice the ball any further wider than that one did. Went out of bounds in the full. Missed everything. Looks like a Lear earlier to the bench as well. And a hob bit of a hobble coming off. So hopefully he's okay. And he doesn't look uh, particularly well. There's the ball to the outer side. Bokey, he can't win it. But they will come away with it, the Suns. Nutting, he's been pushed forward. He's played on. He has to play on, go quickly. Styles gets it back. Finds Smith. Smith forced to go high. Ball holds up in the breeze. Cameron was there. The ball just eludes him. That's forward again. That was Smith again. They've just hacked it away. Will it stay in? No, it won't. So on that outer wing, we'll have a throw in. Seven points to the margin. Ten and a half minutes gone of this third quarter. Looks like Jacob Dawson's now gone to James Rose, maybe just to apply a bit of a tag and rough him up a little bit. So obviously, James Rose has uh, really come into the game. 12 disposals and two goals now. Crossley at front spot. Well, on there by Brody and also Shear get the ball forward. Nutting is there. He's been pushed forward, so changed the match up there. Turns around, kicks for goal. And just to the near side, so we'll extend the margin back out to eight. We move to 5-9, do the Gold Coast Suns. Swans, 4-7-31. Short kick in. Finds its target. Mayborn goes out to that outer side. Crosley had the sit. Darcy had front spot. Nutting. He's held up there. Good tackle there by Smith. Didn't have an opportunity. Working there is Bokey. And Darcy Cameron brought him down unfairly. But under the circumstances, a bit of a professional free kick there just to hold things up. It's pretty elusive. Does Timakaya Bokey kick inside forward 50 over the top of just about... The main pack there. Ling does well. Mayborn funnels the ball out. Styles goes down the line again. Standing under it is Shear. Pushed over the back. Amati's there. Leslie will lead the charge though for the Suns. Gets it off to Mackenzie Willis. Bokey. Now to Shear. Kicks it high. Contest there. Dreghorn's there. He was the contest. We haven't seen much of him. Burke's there. Coming through or trying to emerge there was Archie. Gets the ball out. To Foster. Foster slung off it. Round the corner it goes. It goes out of bounds. So we'll have a throw in next to the point post. Not a bad result really in terms of the fact that the Suns can set up again and see what they can do from a stoppage. Yes, Swans I felt have held up pretty well all day defensively. We're 12 minutes into the third quarter and still no goal has been kicked from either side. So we're worth their weight in gold I think. So Cameron gets it down. Ballard's there. And it just goes over the line. Ballard got a of a leg on it, but it was after acceptances there. And Alir Ali is still on the bench there, so it will be interesting. He's a bit of a loss for them. It gives a why the uh, second ruckman, legitimate second ruckman, Hall. He copped a high one from Ling, so he'll win the free kick and he'll be able to go back and shoot for goal. So this is a good opportunity for the Suns here and in the hands of a great operator of the Sharon. Definitely had good numbers today, Hall. 24 disposals, nine clearances and a goal. We kicked one, two. So this will be uh, a major to score out that ledger. So 45 degree angle. We'll have a very good look at it here on Neeful TV. Thanks to our broadcast partner, Bar TV. He'll kick it from 45 metres, opens the angle up a little bit. It looks on line. It's a ripping conveyance. So the margin pushes out to 14 points, courtesy of that Aaron Hall goal, his 25th disposal. As the Suns, they move away to 6-9-45. The Swans, 4-7-31. You want something done right, you put it in the hands of a good tradesman. And he is a good tradesman of the footy. 
All class, wasn't it? And just worked it beautifully in the breeze. And a game high 14 point lead now. So it's uh, it's been a close one all afternoon. But now the Suns out to that two and a bit goal lead. And we, we sort of mentioned it at half time. We think that given the Swans have so many uh, seven academy debutants, we sort of question whether or not they might be able to run out of the game. So an opportunity for the Suns to perhaps just sort of keep that scoreboard pressure up. But we we'll not rule the Swans out by any means on any occasion. We'll see if Alira Lear comes back into the fray as well. I don't think it's anything majorly serious, but he hasn't emerged off the bench. So plenty of stacks on the mill here. The umpire will ball it up. And 90 more possessions for the game so far, the Gold Coast Suns. So they have had the absolute lion's share of the footy. Ballard wrapped up by Rose. That's going nowhere. The umpire will ball it up. Against the bigger man. Crossley has battled exceptionally well. Go at it again with big Cameron. Cameron on that occasion gets it down. Hall leads the race. He'll just backtrack. In fact, it was Archie. Apologies to him. Long kick inside forward 50. Now, Eddie Sansbury, he can straighten up, just go for goal, just measures it nice. He brings it back on the breeze. And Eddie Sansbury, the 34-year-old ex-North Melbourne, Roo, the kangaroo, hops the Suns out to a 20-point lead over the Swans. I think it was McKinley Pierce who was... Um trailing Sansbury there and just gave him too much room to move didn't he and uh, Eddie Sansbury can had all all the time in the world to uh, turn, uh, do a U-turn and, and size up the goals and, and have his shot and like we mentioned um, he uh, definitely knows where the goals are and you give him any sort of chance and uh, and he'll make you pay so not enough defensive pressure there from the Swans on that occasion but uh, well done to Eddie Sansbury. A little bit of a scuffle off the ball James Rose involved and I think he's resenting the treatment of Jacob Dawson, who's been set a task back there. He's a bit of a pest, Jacob Dawson, isn't he? And <laughs> It's getting ugly now. And it is a little bit ugly there as Rose. And Jacob Dawson is on the deck. And plenty of players have come in. And Gold Coast Suns, we'll get back to the play here. There's plenty of players behind play. And it's Brody goes up there and kicks the ball inside forward 50. And only found Maybaum. Stoddart comes away with it. And suggests that uh, James Rose might be in a little bit of strife. There's Jake Brown. Bokey is right there. And uh, coming off with the blood rule is James Rose. And also Jacob Dawson. In, uh, yeah, I guess in good news for the Swans, Alira Lear is, looks like he's ready to come back on. But, yeah, James Rose and Jacob Dawson coming off. I'm just wondering about James Rose. He's coming to, yeah, he's coming to the interchange gates. So jumper torn, James Rose. He'll go back on. Well, in fact, he'll go off. And Alira Lear, in good news for the Swans, he'll go back on. And the blood rule applied to Jacob Dawson and I'm assuming James Rose there. So free kick on play. In fact, it will go back to the boundary up high who didn't throw it in appropriately. A little bit tricky in the breeze. Jess Webster just trying to cast an eye across that Swans bench for us just to see a bit of the uh, discussion going on. Amadi in the ruck. Let's see what this brings now. Amadi. It's the ball back. Soff. He coughs off. Coughs hit up. Schoenfeld. Foster. And Ballard, he's just flung off it. And Amadi did well to stay in the contest and eventually wins the free kick. Just goes off the one step. The big tall timber down there for the Swans. Can't affect a mark. Unable to get the ball away on that occasion was Stanford. Now the, Swan, uh, the Suns can come away with it. This is Archie. 
He and Stoddart going at the ball. And Stoddart happy to have the ball go over the boundary line. The Suns attack again. Anything you can pass on to us, Jess? Any words of wisdom, information you can gather? He might have just been brought off for being a naughty boy. I think I didn't see any obvious bleeding or anything to warrant a blood rule. But uh, just uh, having a spell on the bench, I think, is James Rose for the moment. Well, that's a little bit of a... An issue considering they only have 22 against 23. So just impacts the rotations. And a lot of young players looking for an example to be set. Schoenfeld just tries to impact the contest there. He's in amongst it. Ballard just can't quite pick it up. Plenty of players around the contest. He's got a little bit willing all of a sudden. Baru, he'll just hook it around. Inside forward 50. Looks like it's going over the back. Maybomb also there on that occasion is Malloy. Gets the ball off. Sandsbury goes around the corner. Might have been Heron, but he just coughed the ball up to Dylan Smith. And the Swans can bring it away. And on the far side, that halfback flank there is Darcy Cameron, guarded by Jack Leslie. He's up towards Alir Alir and Mackenzie Willis. Good contest, one-on-one. Alir Alir tries to get up and go with the ball. Can't do so. He goes again, just trying to fend players off. Heron's one of those he's trying to fend off, but can't do so. And the ball tied up on that outer wing. I think Darcy Cameron has been one of the Swans, but if not, if not the Swans best today. 16 disposals, 26 hitouts, five clearances, five inside 50s and two goals. He's worked his butt off today. Uh, Marty over the back with a hit out. Just tries to extract it with a little bit of sheer brute strength. Then lays a tackle. Schoenfeld's in there as well. The ball comes out through the agency of Jake Brown. Bit of a foot race. McCartan beaten by it or just didn't quite take it with him is probably a better description. Jasker leads the race. And he is just bustled over the line. He wouldn't be too upset about that as Frangos. Chris Frangos applies the pressure. Just noticed James Rose is heading up to the Swans' rooms at the moment. So maybe to be further assessed. Interesting to see a little bit of the video if we've got anything. Alir Alir gets it off. Ling just tries to put the skates down, just tries to measure a pass. McCartan drops it, hits the ground, so play on Sakali, just hits it forward. Dawson. It's the ball out to Baru. He's happy to get the ball over. That's a clever little kick. Opens up now for Will Brody. And off to Nutting. The ball spoiled away. Probably just didn't take it well. Well done by Jack Maybaum. He steals the ball away. Now to half forward. Darcy Cameron with the one. Mick takes a nice mark. Right on forward 50. Good opportunity. Won't have the distance. So he sets it up. Looking for the big boy in Simcock, or Simcock. Shea, it's the ball away. Indiscriminate kick. Crosley has to create a contest, does it? Two on one. Well done, Braden Crosley. Ballard gets away. Burke now Crosley. Good second effort. Chips the ball inside, forward 50. Nutting. And also in the race there is Cordell. Cordell leads the race. Not sure where to go. Needs to stay in. Thought he went out of bounds. Umpire says no. Comes back and Crossley. Take a bow, young man. Good work there. And gets the ball inside. Schoenfeld dropped what he should have taken. Blinded by maybe his red hair there and the sun. And now Ballard, he's wrapped up by a couple of swans. Oh, great the passage ball. of play there from Crossley, wasn't it? Just second, third efforts. And that's what um, we can see. I think that's the best of Braden Crossley. We can see he has that ability. He's just got to do that more consistently because he can really impact a game. Aaliyah in the ruck now. Ripped off it there was Hall. Dents there. Also there was Soff. Jake Brown has his kick smothered. Schumach can't take it with him. And working hard there is Verdorn. And the ball out of, the, out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. So the margin, 20 points. We played 23. Well, over 23 and a half minutes of this third quarter. You sense that if Gold Coast kick another goal here, it might just sort of start to crack the Swans. Yeah, I agree with you there, Kanga. The Swans can't afford to concede another one. And uh, they haven't scored a goal yet this term. And so they'll be wanting to get themselves on the score sheet, that's for sure. Lira Lear does well. Suns have the numbers here. But you never can tell. Never it's can. an awkward ball. They will come away with it. Mackenzie Willis has the ball there. The kick's not a bad one. Drakehorn was the target. Couldn't take it with him. In fact, it was Ballard. 
Might be Sandsbury down low. This falls over. Where he need to stay on his feet. Happens when you get a bit old. And your balance becomes a little bit bereft. And the ball out of bounds as Schoenfeld tried to take it away. But the boundary umpire says, no, 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 no. Out of bounds. I'll throw it in. Thank you. Margin 20 points. Out of sight. Half forward. Run back into play. Cameron. And also Crosley. Hall tries to spin out but couldn't take the footy with him. Ends up with Show and Fells. A bit of the show and go there from the show and Feld. Nutting has the ball punched away. Stoddart gets the ball back. Upended with the Swans. Nutting tries to get the kick away. Got his foot to it, says the umpire. Ballard comes through. Burke, neat little handball. Shear sets the ball up in the air. Two on two. Ballard and happy to see the ball over, 21 points. Now the margin with that behind. So they're pressing the Suns and the Swans are just hanging on at the moment, you sense. Yeah, absolutely. The Swans are, sorry, the Suns rather have definitely taken control of this contest and um, even when the Swans look to go forward, they don't have much to go to. So um, here's an opportunity with the free kick. And they've got a Lear up on the wing as well, if they can get it to him. Too high was the call in the marking contest. And Braden Crossley was just intent on bringing it to ground, but did so illegally. Up to where Jess Webster said, and the, that man that she, old Nostradamus Jessica Webster, suggested Aliyah Aliyah would get the ball. He's got and 50 And he got 50 too. as well. So that's a good news story for the Swans because they'll be able to put it deep inside their forward 50. Bring him up very close to the 50-metre arc. Got our Marty up forward, McCartan. So they do have some marking power up there. And the big boy in Sincock is there as well. Doesn't mind his chances here, Alia Alia. And that was not a hope as he's pulled it. A uh, Marty, though. I thought he had it for a moment, but it was just knocked away. Had a good run at it, didn't he? Just haven't judged the judged the uh, the breeze real well mm -hmm. at different points in time. The, uh, the the Suns' defenders as the ball's dropped, and that's big, where Marty has just used his judgment a little bit better. A big opportunity though for the Swans though, to make something out of nothing. Two, three, fifteen. This quarter, the Suns, the Swans just the one behind. It was Foster. Now to a leer, a leer around the corner. Does it make the distance? No, it just sits up. It bounces. Goes around. Trouble here. And ripped off the ball. Good saving tackle. And the ball tied up. Mackenzie Willis, ginger. As is Jaska back there. Just couldn't quite pick up who that saving tackle was from. And the ball. At three metres away from the Swans' goal, Aaron Hall. Quick kick away. Always dangerous in this occasion because you're always worried about who's there. But fortunately, it was Burke there for the Suns. Nothing really forward. The kick's not a good one, so just swallowing it is Darcy Cameron. That's not a good foray from defence. They've got a Lear free again. If they can just pop it over, and it goes in his direction. So sh getting back there with Shear, but a Lear with sheer strength beat Shear. And this time, he'll fancy himself a little bit, a bit better, but he'll still have to kick it from just about all of 50, 50 or so metres, which will be tough into this breeze. Yeah, that breeze is a killer down that end of the ground, isn't it? But he'll definitely back himself and have a shot. And this to bring the margin back to 15 points. Looking for a long-range goal here, the Swans. Can't be far off three-quarter time. From 49 metres, that's the siren. And it's punched through for a behind. So well done to Darcy Cameron there. Just a bit of peace of mind. So one point is the score. It's waved through. So 20 points the margin at three-quarter time. The Gold Coast Suns threw goals in that quarter to Aaron Hall and Eddie Sandsbury. And the Sydney Swans, they weren't able to post a goal. Just the two behinds have extended the margin. 
On half time being seven points out to 20 points at the last change. Jess Webster, it's a... Uh, it's an enthralling contest, but you just sense that the Suns have had the better of it, the Swans. They've just done well to hang in there. And the possession count, 97 more in favour of the Suns, uh, which, is, uh, which probably tells the tale right there. I think, you know, you hit the nail on the head when you said the Swans are just hanging on because you feel like at any moment this game could break open. And um, that was a really important quarter for the Suns um, to keep them scoreless and add a couple of goals as well just to push it out to that game-high margin of 20 points. We know the Suns, uh, so the Swans came in with a, a player down, playing 22 against 23. Um, we're not sure whether or not James Rose will feature again in this game, so there could be another player down. Um, so it'll be the challenges is ahead for them um, in this last quarter. But uh, it's, I think it's there for, for the Suns to win um, if they control the contest and make sure they hit their targets and keep that disposal efficiency, efficiency right um, you know then they'll, they'll run away with it I think well, both sides are taking a breather and we will do exactly the same here on Neefal TV thanks to our broadcast partner Bar TV and the Neefal proudly supported by Elastoplast is 20 points at three quarter time we'll be back after the three quarter time break
And the players emerge from their three-quarter time huddles here at Fankhouse Reserve on the beautiful Gold Coast, Southport Sharks home ground. The Gold Coast Suns home game for this NEFL Round 4 clash. In a three-quarter time, it is the home side, the Gold Coast Suns, leading the Sydney Swans by 20 points. And some fireworks in that third quarter. And on the field, only a couple of goals there, but uh, James Rose seemed to come from the ground, and we can confirm that James Rose was reported for striking. Haven't seen him come back on the bench yet, as he and Jacob Dawson had to leave the arena with the blood rule. Mark Kennedy's my name. Jess Webster joins me, and we're underway here in this last quarter, and we'll have to come back for a restart. And Jess, you just sense that the Suns might kick away, but the Swans have hung tough. Yeah, absolutely. We've been expecting the Suns to take control or, or win comfortably all day, but the Swans have always stuck there um, and stuck close on the scoreboard. So, um, you know, they're not out of it by any means, but um, but you do expect that the Suns will have um, more legs, I think, in this last quarter. they got the ball going for the Suns, but Riley Stoddart, take a good defensive mark from true centre-half back, kicks the ball forward. Darcy Cameron's the target over top of his head. McCartan just slips over as he handles the ball. Mackenzie Willis pushes his opponent off the ball to win possession, then does the one-two with Crosley, gets the ball out. Foot race out towards the boundary line. That breeze is just a little bit fluky up and down. Definitely favouring the Swans' end. And they've got the type of forward line that could wreak a few problems with McCartan up there. Also, Sincock and Armadi. All capable of some... Good aerial work. Crossley took front spot. And the ball goes over the line again. Where the Suns have probably been a little bit more efficient is around the clearances, Jess, 34 to 29. But when they've got the likes of Aaron Hall and Callum Archia in there, they, they do tend to look a lot more dangerous. Well, Aaron Hall's had 11 of those clearances and Jacob Dawson with six. And uh, you're right, Will Brody with five. And... Um, Archie with a couple to his name as well. So plenty of class around the footy for the Suns. And Alia Alia gets that clearance. Ball brought back. It's touched in the contest. So the spoil. Ling gets it off to Jake Brown. Handball over the top. Sincock. He didn't see it coming. Jasker just wrapped him up. Hall tried to spin out a one. Now pick it up on the second attempt. He'll go. Tries to show a clean pair of heels. Gets it off to Mills. Handball under pressure. And then the kick is not a good one because... Cameron, he just had that wrapped up, just lowers his eyes and does well and finds soft at right on the forward 50. He's got the breeze behind him too, I think. The umpire just brings him online. Just assessing his options, decides to just bomb it up high. Won't get there, but the front spot, that did have front spot there with us. Sons Hall just spins out of a tackle. Gee, I'll tell you what, he uh, was very close to being paid holding the ball. Sandsbury just tries to go off the ground. Nutting. He can't quite complete the tackle. Styles uh, just messing around with it. Here's Rogers. Gets a quick kick away under pressure. Now cough it up here, the Swans. Ballard. And then Shear gets a quick one away. Archie has the ball spalled away by Dent. Does well. Young man, Nutting gets front spot. It's the ball backwards. Ballard just fakes one, then gets the kick away. And it is Maybaum who comes it out. He's been a bit of a rock in defence this afternoon. Jess Webster. Yeah, that experienced head always bobbing up and taking those marks when you need him. And um, he's a very valuable member of the uh, Swan side today. Dent under pressure. Frangos now to Styles to Stoddart. So Stoddart, he had a kick about... At the very start of the quarter, he finds a target on this occasion. Jake Brown, that kick wasn't a good one. Shear just gets the ball up. Ballard just gets it out of there. That's not a good kick because it just goes straight back to Stoddart from where he took the last couple of marks. He wants to take off too. I'm trying to take the game on. Ball down, Sincock. And showing a clean set of heels there as Jasket comes through. Dawson. His kick away quickly, but again, that's a poor entry inside forward 50 and cut off yet again by Maybourne. 
Gee, the Swans have started this last quarter with a bit of intensity, aren't they? And the Suns, same old story. They just um, keep wasting their opportunities. A bit off the side of the boot. McCartan couldn't take it on the second grab. Willis comes through. Kick. Archie takes the mark. Rode the, con rode the contact well. Gets it up to Sandsbury. Has Bokai forward. And Eddie Sandsbury, that's a poor kick for a man of your abilities, albeit coming out of retirement to play today. And out of bounds on the full, and it'll be Angus Stiles who wins the free kick. Is it beyond them, Kanga? Do you think the Swans could cause a, what would be a pretty big upset? Ten list plays and seven debutants and a couple down on the bench. Could they actually do it? Well, one thing I do know, they've kicked four goals for the game and they need to uh, kick at least another four goals. Let the Suns kicking one. Amati to back Styles. So only succeeds getting a big up and under. Shear with courage. Feeds the ball up to Mills. He couldn't handle it though. So here's a chance. Dawson, he got he wrapped up Aaliyah well. He just didn't see a, Dawson coming. So Aaliyah, Aaliyah wins a free kick or gives a free kick up to Jacob Dawson. They go out wide to Hall. And again, they just feel like they're just messing around a little bit, the Gold Coast Suns, with the football. Gets the block from Crosley and then just tries to chip it up to Nutting. Can't do so. Shear couldn't take it with him. Dawson gets it up to a one-on-one -on -one contest. Stoddart does well. Right there with him was Josh Malloy. And the young man was good enough for the Gold Coast Suns to force Stoddart to take it out of bounds and keep the ball inside forward 50 for the Suns. You think a goal here for the Suns would just about break the Swans. Thrown again. Like almost uh, Baru going up in the mark, up in the ruck contest. And thrown off the ball was Nutting. Trying to get up there was Hall. Stands in the tackle, gets a handball away. Baru there again. Nutting feeds it out. And that's from Shia is ordinary. Off one step, admittedly. But again, probably just had just that little bit of extra time and couldn't do it as a Lear Lear. We'll take the ball deep in the back pocket. He's up the line, Crossley and also Darcy Cameron. Swans clear, but Leslie's there at the wing. He drops what he should have taken. He'll mop it up. He has a bit of time. Shows a clean set of heels. That's a terrible kick, though, so I'll turn it over again. They look like they've struggled to really kick the ball into the breeze today. And the ball, as it comes back, was intended for Frangos. And the ball bounces, does a bit of a right angle out of bounds. So the margin is still 20 points. Hasn't been inspiring football this last quarter so far in the first seven and three-quarter minutes, Jess. I don't think it's been inspiring football all day, if I'm, if I'm completely brutally honest. But uh, main thing for the Suns, they're ahead on the scoreboard and they're in the box seat for a win. And that's a very nice bit of strength there from Parker. Gets the ball off to Frangos. And then the big arms of Jacob Sincock get up. And he fancies himself clearly because he's going back, the big man. Was named it as emergency today, but after the withdrawals of Nick Newman and Colin Riordan, slices it slightly, and over the back of the pack the ball goes. So the minor margins at 19. Sun still lead. The short kick in finds Mackenzie Willis and Jacob Dawson. Short kick finds Shear right on the boundary line. Just worked it out reasonably here. Go up the line. Short one will find Ballard. I do have numbers out the other side of the ground if they want to use them. But they decide to go up the wing, and that's very close to the boundary line. In fact, it's out of bounds. And again, they had numbers on the outer side. They could have used, but chose to go up the line, Jess. 
Yeah, it's not, not been the prettiest football today, and I think there's a lot for the Suns to work on. And there's a turnover. Mills has it. Now they go to that outer side. Got Jacob Dawson, captain the Suns NEFL team in round one. Out towards Jaska, coming the other way, but standing tough with Jaska. He looks a little bit hurt. Bokai goes up forward. Target was Hall. Nutting's there. And they're happy to take the ball out of bounds. And we have... It's Stoddard, I think. He's um, come off a little worse for wear. He's going to be sore in the morning. No, and he's it's actually Dylan Smith, I think Dylan you might Smith, find. Sorry. There's the other player on the Swans with the headband on. So, didn't look too well. Cameron and Crosley. Brown gets it back, Crosley. For the Suns, it's it going forward. Ling keeps it in, gets it to Styles. Styles just measures the ball. Frangos can't take it. Ali is there to try and mop it up. Crosley tries to lay the tackle. It's the handball away to Zalia. Kick away there was Parker. The numbers do the Suns. Mackenzie Willis bounces the ball, eludes the Swans opponent up towards Archie. Well done there by the Swans. They can get involved again. Well done there by Heron. And Dawson overruns it. The ball stays in. And the ball goes forward. McCartan is wrapped up by Ballard. So again, not pretty footy as we see Loon. He got her off the ground before. Just towed it forward. And he just comes in and wraps up Verdun. Verdun. I'll get that right at some stage. See Dylan Smith breaking that leg coming off. Yeah, he's not in a good way. Crosley got it down. Ballard had his kick smothered. Parker. Crosley and Cameron again. Ballard gets the kick away going forward. McKen uh, in fact, nutting that is. That's a good mark under a bit of pressure. Notice one out down further there is Aaron Hall. Just chips the ball over, finds Schoenfeld. The forward line is very, very open. The kick isn't a good one, just over the head of Hall and into Cameron's hands. Coming up for Mark, Mark number 11, I think that was. 22 disposals, 30 hitouts. He's been a star today. He sure has. Ballard. Fist up, spoils it. Willis gets the ball around quickly. The ball just tapped back in. Dangerous for the Suns. They just try and mop it up. Schoenfeld. Dawson, he'll bring it back out this side. Leslie has the run at it, but just front spot was the Suns player there. Parker, fourth to spoil was Heron. And ripped off it illegally without the ball is Schumach. So the Swans, they'll have a clear shot at goal here. We have played 12 and a half minutes of this last quarter. And a kick here could bring it back to 13 points, Jess Webster. He's on debut, Schumach, one of the seven debutants for the Swans out there today. So this will be something if he can inspire his side to have a bit of a comeback. What, like, one of the biggest positives, I think, for Sydney today is they have not given up and not they, they've maintained that effort and intensity in the whole game they could have let this game go but they keep trying so Schumach he just pulls it and it hits the left hand goal post so three straight kicks is now the margin and they've missed a couple of easy ones today the Sydney Swans you'd suggest it very gettable and that there was one a couple of players starting to come off with cramp for the Sydney Swans too the ball over the back. Was it touched beforehand? Oh, this is a big call. And out of, out of bounds on the full. Effectively, it is. It wasn't touched. So the Swans, through Stoddart, they'll launch it back in. Dangerous spot. McCartan! He uh, was really great early, McCartan. He, I think at one stage, had about 10 disposals and six marks. Haven't seen a lot of him in, in the second half or sort of really from half time. But uh, he, again, he's always a player that just manages to keep presenting and keep, he's got really great hands. 
Um, he's a fantastic young forward, and, and this will be something if he can get this goal. Hasn't kicked a goal yet today, just the two behinds. The Swans have only kicked four for the day, and that looks like a good conveyance. So they get around Tom McCartan because they stay very much alive in this game. Just two straight kicks in it as the Swans close to 12 points. They move to 5-10-40. Gold Coast Suns, 7-10-52. Jess Webster, got a bit of a game on her hands here. And, uh, you know, 100 disposals a difference. But the Swans, they've hung tough. They've, they've got the job done. And it's like players like McCartan and Darcy at the right times have stepped up when it looked like the Suns, who have messed around with the ball, mm -hmm. haven't been able to put it on the scoreboard. Well, the main thing is they, they, they do play with a bit of confidence, Sydney. Like, they don't look like a side that think that they aren't a chance of winning today. They haven't looked like that at all. It's just obviously a little bit lacking a bit of depth and experience, but they're well in it, and they're a massive chance to cause a big boil over today. So Schoenfeld and Shear. Suns get it going their way. They need a steady in goal. Archie, he tried to pluck it. Nutting applies the tackle. Well done with the tackle from Baru there, and the ball's held up, so Swans hold tough. In the back half of the ground. In fact, it was Burke with the tackle. Uh, Marty in the ruck here. And also a Lear down there as well. So we'll see who's going to take that. Be a Marty. Dreghorn. Just had no eyes for the footy, really. Archie comes through. Kicks on goal. And that's a good answer. Pushes the margin back out to 18 points. And the class rises to the top. We saw McCart with the big catch down one end, and then Callum Archie, a little bit of class to come through the pack down the other. Yeah, it was definitely elite, wasn't it? It was a, a great goal, and it really has been uh, the likes of Archie and Aaron Hall, as you spoke about. Jacob Dawson has really steered the ship for the Suns today, and, um, and that one really hurts the Swans. They started this game for the first 15, sorry, they started this quarter for the first 15 minutes. You know, their pressure was up, their intensity was up, and they looked like they were really having a run at it. That one hurts for them, considering I felt like they really um, brought the effort to start this last quarter. But uh, still plenty of time left. We're only 16 minutes into the last quarter. Margins three straight kicks. Good to see young Dylan Smith back on the field too. Obviously, it's uh, very bruised up. That shin, I believe it might have been, as we have a secondary stoppage in the middle of Fankow's reserve here. Crosley and also Amati. Crosley with a bit of the extra body strength. And Alia gone in the middle of the ground now to try and give some run and carry in some extra strength. Mills tries to come through. Good handball. Hall and also Willis is there as well. Ball comes up. And through there. Now with the ball is Malloy. Malloy just went short, was happy to go short and find Will Brody. He does likewise and finds the goal kicker in Archie. That kick again is not a good one, although the mark was dropped. Malloy goes around the corner, so it's still on there for the Suns at least. Good work there by the Swans' defence. They'll repel here, and they've got the numbers out here. Ling just puts the skates on, gets around. The kick was, was a smart one, the finish. Finds Cameron. He'll feed it back. Goes back to Loon. Loon up towards McCartan. Jask is also there. Just pushes off. Does... McCartan gets the ball across. Parker, that's which way is that going to bounce? And it hits the post. Thought it was going to come back. Just need a little bit more time just to get that curl in. Almost there. Almost there. Kick in. A little bit of air. Found Dawson. He's got Schoenfeld. And Schoenfeld's got a little bit of time but decides to go back. And kicks it over the top. And finds Foster. And Brody Foster measures it. Finds Burke. He's dragged Maybaum well down the ground. Didn't see much of Aaron Hall after the first couple of minutes of this quarter. He's back around the contest. And ball goes up to a pack. Malloy there. He's dragged off it. Baru has his kick smothered. Brown's there. Uh, Marty. Gets the ball out the back, but only finds a Suns player in Brody. Has handball 
smothered. The opposite 41 in Jake Brown goes forward now. Aaliyah Crosley imparts the contest or impacts the contest at least. Ball comes up. Ling goes um, deep it forward. Cameron was there. Also Leslie was there. McCartan's there. Kicks up and sprays it off the side of his boot and it just squeezes in for a behind. So they've had chances here, the Sydney Swans. We've just had the two goals kicked in this last quarter so far. You wouldn't think it's going to be a long quarter the way it's going. Just about to enter time on, about 20 minutes gone. Desperate stuff from the Suns there in defence. Oh, they may have caused another turnover. And Aaliyah, he brought about that turnover. He just tries to chip the ball up. Goes over the back. Mills couldn't hang on to it. McCartan just tries to feed it up. Almost looked like a throw. The Suns may come away with this, do they? Yes, they do. And it's Brody that just says, boys, settle it down. That's a short one. It's the big man, Crosley. Liked his game as well. It's been a great battle with he and Cameron. Foster goes to Schoenfeld. You just get the feeling they're not intent on taking the ball down and scoring so much as, in, as opposed to maintaining possession, which at times the Gold Coast Suns haven't done that real well. Stoddart off two feet, does well. They're going to try and take the game on here, the Swans. So Stoddart plays on quickly, right to the forward 50. Brown at the back, and he holds on to it. Is it on the second bite? Why did he pluck it cleanly? Because he'll, he'll fancy himself. Well, he's got Alir Alir and Darcy Cameron both down around the goal square, but I reckon he's, like you say, Kangaroo, he's going to back himself here. Margin 16. Strikes it pretty nicely, although it slides across the face. One goal, five now in this last quarter for the Suns. Six scoring shots to one. And I, if I was Nick Malcheski, the Suns coach, I would not be particularly pleased about this output from the Suns. While conversely, Ty Canelli, I think he'd be very proud of the Sydney Swans and their efforts today, notwithstanding the fact that they're still in this game. Yeah, absolutely. It just, the Suns are obviously ahead on the scoreboard. They're winning the disposals on most of the, the um, KPIs, I guess, on the stat sheet. But you know, it hasn't been convincing. And, um, you know, while the likes of Aaron Hall and Callum Chi have been great, you know, are they pressing for AFL selection at the moment? I feel like they should be tearing this game apart, to be honest. Mackenzie Willis just loads it up. Crossley and Cameron. Ballard went high. Well done there by Mills. Hall couldn't take it with him, so the turnover comes. Oh, oh that's, that's dangerous. dangerous. Yep, yeah, that's dangerous. So winning the free kick. And again, I don't think there was any malice in it. As he had the opportunity to absolutely bury soft, did uh, Burke. Chose not to. Dylan Smith kicks the ball in. Awkward looking kick. And with the fist. Was the Gold Coast Suns? It might have been Ballard with that fist. Yes, it was. So, 23 minutes or approaching 23 minutes of this last quarter. The margin 15. Amadi and Crosley. Ball rolls back towards the boundary line, and we'll do it all again. If the Suns get over the line today, which you expect you would, 15 points up with 23 minutes gone, it'll be their first win over Sydney in 14 consecutive games. So they haven't beaten them in over five years. Well, if that's not a little bit of extra incentive, I'm not sure what is. Leslie, it's the kick away, flung off it by Aaliyah. Ball ends up with Jacob Dawson. And the kick is high. Contest was... Well done there by Maybaum and also Burke. Kick came from Verdum. And under pressure, the umpire says, that's OK. The ball went out of bounds. Not on the full, but it was OK to be thrown back in. Right in front of us here in the commentary position at Fankhauser Reserve, this round four clash. The Swans are winless so far in season 2018. So they'll want to get on the board. Crosley and also Cameron. There also was Cordell, the ball tied up underneath. 
Speaking of what I think I know as opposed to cold hard facts, Kanga, but I'm pretty sure that Sydney have never started any for season 0 and 3 before that I can think of. So if anybody out there that wants to correct me, um, feel free to do so, but I'm pretty sure it'll be their, their worst start to an EFL season, which says something for, for what is statistically the best side that the EFL has ever seen in terms of wins and losses. They're winning the free kick is Ling, Matthew Ling. Has to go, and that is a terrible, terrible kick under the circumstances. Trying to really pinpoint McCartan, but... It was nowhere close and hugging the boundary line. You've almost, I know you want to take the game on, but you've got to play some percentages at the right times as well. So Schoenfeld, he'll just put it up. Wants the contest, Archie and also Aaliyah. And just didn't have enough on it to get the Crosley to impact the contest. Aaliyah plays on quickly. Chips the ball up, looking for somebody to come and meet it. And Jake Brown is that man. That breeze has really picked up, though. They'll have to try and spot a target, I think. Otherwise, it might fall just, sh just short. So you have to start it. Just so you people watching on at home or on your computer, no matter where you are, you'll have to start it out to the right-hand goalpost and try to bring it back. He does that. Does it have enough on it? It does. Made a fool out of me. So the Sydney Swans narrow the margin to nine points with a goal from Jake Brown. He's been good this afternoon. That was disposal number 23 for him. One goal, two. The margin back to nine. And the game still in the balance. Absolutely. 25 minutes gone now. Had seven scoring shots now to... One going the Swans' way in this last quarter. Two goals, five though. Might come back to haunt them, but they've definitely had the run of play and I've been really impressed with the way that they've run out the game. I didn't think that um, that they would have the legs to match the Suns in the second half, but they're doing a fantastic job with a couple down on the bench and and really taking it up to Gold Coast today. Cameron and Crosley, and there is the final siren. It was a short quarter. There was only three goals kicked for that quarter and the Gold Coast Suns, they will emerge victorious by nine points. A little bit hard stopping, I suppose. There were still two kicks in it, but we weren't sure how long that quarter was going to go. But the Swans had opportunities in that last quarter. As we said, two goals, five to one goal straight. It was close. It wasn't pretty, but the Suns come away with a victory, Jess Webster. Yeah, look, I think coming into this game, we expected the Suns to be too strong. Um, but to give Swans credit, they, they stuck in there. They um, made the Suns pay for their disposal errors and, and um, really sort of kept in it the entire game. I think the coaching staff would be really impressed and pleased with, I think, the effort and intensity they showed right from the opening bounce. For the Suns, look, like you said, it, it wasn't pretty, but they got you know more game time into the likes of, of Calamar Chi and um, obviously Aaron Hall as well, finishing the game with 31 disposals and 11 clearances and two goals. So, um, you know, a couple of really great performances from them. Look, they got the four points, um, but I think there's still plenty to work on for Nick Malcheski um, and the Suns side going forward. Two. Jacob Dawson had 30 disposals involved in an interesting incident with James Rose in the third quarter there. Brad Shear, 26 disposals, six inside 50s. Will Brody had 25. And just want to. A, a, a Seven marks, nine tackles. 32 hitouts, five clearances, five, six inside 50s and two goals. One, a fantastic effort for him. He and uh, Crosley will uh, 
will have a good, well-earned rest now. Jake Brown, he had 23 for the Swans, six marks, five clearances, three inside 50s. Alira Lear, 17 disposals. He had six clearances, four inside 50s. And Tom McCartan, I think he's a player of the future, having seen him in the flesh for the first time today. 15 disposals, eight marks. One goal, three. The radar was off. In eight inside 50s, though. So a number of key ball getters there for both sides. Overall, the Gold Coast Suns had 101 more disposals than the Sydney Swans, but the margin was just but nine points here at Fankhauser Reserve. It was close. Jess Webster not to be for the Swans. The Suns, they march on with another win for the season. They do. They'll head to Canberra next week to take on the Demons while Sydney hosts Aspley at the SCG. So a couple of big games coming up for those two sides. But for today, it was the Suns beating the Swans for the first time in five years. So thanks to Bar TV, who are our production partner for today's coverage on Neefle TV, and also to Elastoplast, who are one of the great sponsors of the Neefle. On behalf of myself, Mark Kennedy, and Jess Webster, and all the team here at Fankhauser Reserve, thanks for joining us this afternoon. It was the Gold Coast Swans by nine points.